data. Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're live at VMworld 2011. This is Silicon Angle's continuous coverage. We're inside the Cube. Uh, I have two great guests here with me. I'm pleased to, to share their knowledge with our audience. Prasad Rampali, who's the Senior Vice President of EMC's uh, Solutions Group, and Mark Lesher, who uh, is a director of the virtualization practice in that group. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for taking your time out to, uh, to, to join us. And um, VMworld 2011, the tech industry event, the, the enterprise IT economy, I, I, I've called it. Um, so let's, uh, let's start, let me actually start with, with Mark, if I may. Mark, what are you guys showing at the event uh, in the solutions group? You got a bunch of demos going on at the booth. What's, what's the action like? Well, actually, Dave, we're showing quite a lot over at the uh, EMC booth. Uh, we have a lot around virtualizing mission-critical applications. Uh, a lot of this is work that's done on the latest version of vSphere 5.0. Uh, so a lot of the performance, the million-dollar I.O. work, uh, again, the team there can talk about the testing that we did, uh, as well as some of the work around VAI integration. In addition to that, we're also showing some demonstrations of uh, vCloud Director with Workflow and vOrchestrator. And what that allows us to do is allows us to automate some of the workflow provisioning tasks uh, that a lot of our large customers look and try and do today. Great, so, um, Prasad, I wonder if I could come to you and, and ask you to, we talked about this in the past in theCUBE, but I wonder if you could refresh our memory on the solutions group that you run. You've brought a new vision, a new energy, um, taking it to the next level, if you will. Um, what is this, the, the charter of the solutions group, and, and talk a little bit about what, what you're doing there. Yeah, thanks, that's um, something I wanted to address. Uh, the, the charter of the group uh, is to really deliver game-changing solutions that differentiate a, a lot of our core uh, storage technology and the emerging big data and cloud-related technology capabilities. And uh, central to that is uh, really addressing endemic pain points uh, in the hybrid cloud space, right? Uh, there are two or three of them that uh, are well known, uh, so I'll just touch on them briefly. Uh, the first, as you would expect, is uh, the, this whole focus on end-to-end -end trust, uh, on how you enable uh, the uh, movement of data as well as uh, your core computing applications uh, in a service provider cloud, and ensure that uh, you don't compromise on data integrity and uh, the core security and compliance requirements. Uh, the second is quality of service. Uh, how do you ensure that uh, as you move your applications and workloads uh, to a public cloud or a service provider environment, uh, you don't compromise on your core SLAs to your customers, uh, and uh, you continue to hold to that. Uh, and lastly, uh, the real focus on uh, ensuring that from the time you have a need for a given application to be run uh, in a public cloud, you can do that in minutes and seconds versus take a week or a month, uh, which is onboarding, right? Um, uh, and so ensuring that uh, these kind of uh, pain points are met uh, in a simple fashion is, is what we're focused on around game-changing solutions. So as you know, the, the marketing always you know, leads the, the, the deployment, and we've heard a lot about cloud, private cloud, public cloud. I mean, it's you know, a lot of cloud action going on. Um, when we talk to the customers in the Wikibon community, they're, they're most are pursuing a, a cloud strategy. They're starting to you know, get, on, get on the curve, um, but they're not, sold on the hybrid cloud yet. There's, they're concerned about that. You mentioned several of these concerns. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of hand-holding that yep. has to be done, and mm -hmm. a lot of services that have to go into this. And, and can you talk a little bit about, about uh, what you're doing in particularly that, that, that services angle? Do you bring that to bear in the solutions group? Do you take advantage of that? Do you bring that to market? How does that all work? Yeah, so I'll take the lead and I'll let uh, Mark also talk about the specific work we're doing in that space. Our approach to this is uh, uh, we can't theorize on, on how you build a hybrid cloud. We have to actually go build it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've created service provider centric uh, labs and we're working with uh, well-known service providers as uh, co-participants in the lab where we take their specific uh, OSS, BSS context, uh, the specific applications that they want to offer as a service and ensure that we can actually ring that out as a reference architecture end to end with our core storage environments. And so uh, we are starting off with compute as a service, uh, backup and recovery as a service, and VDI as a service as the three primary solutions uh, that uh, a lot of the customers are asking for uh, and the service providers are obviously trying to provide that uh, post haste as they move up the stack, right? So uh, we are really ringing out uh, 
a lot of detail behind uh, these three stacks. And uh, I, I want to have Mark uh, tell you maybe uh, how we are doing that. Yeah, so there was, it was compute, backup and recovery, and, and VDI. With the VDI three. as the lead vehicles, uh, yeah. but we're also looking at healthcare vertical, uh, enabling um, uh, patient care imaging as a service. Uh, we're looking at oil and gas. And last but not the least, and Fergal will, uh, from, from, yeah, uh, from Nisey Tech will yeah. come and talk to you about how we are partnering with them and enabling analytics as a service, uh, high performance data analytics which is in many ways is kind of the last frontier that we have to enable as a service given all the issues you have yeah, with data. Yeah, I'm interested in that case study, so. Right. Uh, Mark, uh, go ahead, uh, fill us in on some of the details. Yeah, actually, so, you know, carry on the discussion around the hybrid crowd, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of the technologies are there today and are coming, and we see that with some of the layer two work and some of the uh, you know, data center interconnect technologies, coupled as well as some of the security products. Uh, but I think you're right in saying that today, I think, you know, you need a good service provider that's done a lot of work around process and management. Uh, so there's a lot of good work that's done out there, and as the automation comes in, as we're starting to see today, you know, with net new products like VXLAN for security coming out of VMware, uh, some of the products that we're seeing out of you know, the secure cloud and TXT type functionality, I think that will then allow us to automate a lot of those functionality that we currently rely on process to achieve. Talk about automation a little bit more, the driver for automation. I mean, obviously, you know, simplicity, there's a, there's a cost factor. Is there a quality element as well? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think once you know, good process allows you to ensure quality uh, in automation. Good code and good, you know, good application development, good processing and capability allows you to ensure that you have quality of security. So the ability to not only you know guarantee security, but the ability to then look at compliance and audit that, I think is an important aspect that we don't have today as easily as we can and will have in the future. So how, how do you or how will you measure that? Well, today it's a very manual process, and you know I think what we're seeing now is we're seeing, you know, some of the new security products that are coming into play that will allow us to you know, go out, look at an environment, uh, you know, take the red measure it against a set of policies and expectations, and then report back uh, compliance figures on that. So I think there's a lot of interesting technology that's going to come out there, and I think that'll help bridge the gap for customers who are a little bit concerned about hybrid cloud uh, as we move forward. Yeah, just to add to this, you know the the. The quality cannot be done as patchwork. Uh, it has to be ingrained in the design in the core architecture. Uh, and if you take a look at security, right, uh, the, the biggest issue we have with asserting security is uh, how do you establish the root of trust? Uh, uh, it is well known that the operating system, the application layers, cannot be the basis or the datum for the root of trust because they are eminently hackable. Uh, and frankly, the only place you can go to to establish that root, uh, I believe, is in the hardware. Right. Uh, this is where we are working with Intel, uh, where from um, their core uh, instruction set uh, enabled at the microprocessor level and the chipset, uh, we can do a measurement uh, through this technology called TXT, which is trusted execution. Mm -hmm. And we are integrating our core uh, RSA product environment uh, by which we authenticate to the hardware and do, do the measurement and then say, hey, the virtual machine is bona fide, therefore the application can be trusted and then we let the application run as part of the authentication process. And uh, getting at this deep-rooted integration with uh, uh, establishing the right principles of how you establish trust uh, is an example of how we think we'll design in quality versus checking it after a you know, post facto and saying, hey, we have quality or not. By that time, it's the deal's done. Now, you mentioned a number of different types of solutions, Com compute, backup recovery, VDI, healthcare, analytics. Are these all of hybrid cloud, what you would call hybrid cloud solutions, or is it a, a mix? Uh, by definition, we are looking at implementing first in the private cloud environment, mm -hmm. but each of these uh, reference architectures, we want them to be multi-tenant enabled, uh, and we want them to be uh, exported to a hybrid cloud environment, i.e. work on the wide area network, uh, enable live migration and things like that, bursting and so on. That. Uh, we want to demonstrate in the hybrid cloud. And so uh, the, the, the progression is you're starting with the private cloud, prove it in the private cloud, and that's what you, you know, I presume you've done this for all of these solutions uh, that we're talking about. All, all three of them, yeah. Today we've yeah. done that in the private the, cloud the space. The compute, backup, and recovery, and VDI. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, the, the NICE story as well, right? I mean, that's a... Uh, the NICE is story the is, is still unfolding, so I'll let yeah, Fergal okay. talk okay, about great. it. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll but uh, we, we are really looking at uh, enabling uh, analytics as a service. Mm. Uh, and the first part of that is really ensuring that uh, we can stand up a, a analytics uh, implementation uh, 
in a service provider environment, which we have to do at this point. Uh, we are working through that. Okay, so we're, at, we're, we're clearly, we're, where are we in the private cloud deployment today? Are we there, it's hardened? You know, you can prove that, customers can go and kick it and try it and deploy it, is that right? Or? Uh, we believe so, yeah. yeah we, for those we, three? For those three, yeah. yeah. We, we, and, and I'll let Mark speak to it. We actually have a very good demonstration of uh, VDI and the benchmarks in uh, our, our booth here, right? Uh, yep. Where we can show that uh, we can essentially look at a a, uh, a network bootstorm that can be contained in, uh, I think it's uh, 30 seconds or less uh, across 5,000 desktops. Okay. Uh, and so we, we, we've proven that stuff, right? Uh, at a level where we think it'll scale. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are taking it to the hybrid cloud space and saying can we enable that same level of performance and scalability where we leverage cache, where we leverage link clones and various technology elements in the private cloud and can we demonstrate that as a service in a multi-tenant environment in the public cloud, so. Great. Did you want to add anything to that, Mark, or? Good. Uh, I think, you know, when you go into the hybrid cloud, I think a lot of those pieces are there as well today. Um, we're seeing that with a lot of the implementations that, you know, some of our partners are doing in the service provider space. So, you know, I think it's, you know, you can move forward comfortably with some of the right partners, uh, but, you know, I think, you know, as the technology matures and some of it comes in, we'll have you know, much broader adoption next year. So, I mean, it's, you guys, sounds like you're tracking the market. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're deep now into the private, the hybrid, you have visibility on it, starting to really solve that problem. I mean, I think it's consistent with the data that we showed at the top, and we fully expect that yeah. this is really going to take off. Um, one of the things we've been looking at is, is understanding the data. Uh -huh. You know, that's a, it seems to be a really important thing for users, like the interdependencies across the application. I mean, is that something that, you know, uh, uh, you're focused on? Is that the right area for us to be focused on as, as, as observers? Uh, what are your thoughts on that as far as enabling the hybrid cloud specifically? Well, I mean, I, that's obviously you know, the interaction of data is very important, especially if you're bridging a, your private cloud to a public cloud. Uh, so, you know, obviously you need to progress you know, in a very intelligent manner. You need to understand your applications, especially if you're going to go in an active act environment you know, versus more of an outsourcing out to a hybrid, hybrid cloud model. Uh, but you know, I think that's the, been the same rule we had years ago, which is you have to understand the interdependency of data. Yeah. If you're going to back it up, if you're going to migrate it, if you're going to control it. Is it is it fair to say that the 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 greater the interdependencies across the application portfolio, the greater the complexities, and the, the those will be the last to go into the to the hybrid, or is that not, not the case in your in your opinion? Uh, I think in many cases it will depend. I think you know the, the first instinct to answer is yes. Yeah. I think people tend to look at the lower hanging fruit. You know, what can I the software development? What can I push out into the hybrid cleanly? Uh, but I think there's a very compelling case for you know some of the critical applications that are very well containerized. You know, where you know what the dependencies are, and you're looking for either greater performance, greater high availability, or you know greater burst workload capability. I think those very particular applications can be focused on and taken to a hybrid cloud very successfully. And the, and the, and the business case will be there. Right. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, well, Prasad and Mark, thank you very much for coming inside theCUBE, sharing with us uh, your knowledge. Um, that's what we like to do in theCUBE. And, uh, <laughs> and really appreciate you guys taking, I know you're really busy, you know, tons of customers here, a lot of partners, so thank you very much. It was uh, great to see you again, yeah. Prasad. Glad Mark, to be here. Thank, thank you very, very much, much. Dave.